The following is another story by Reddit user Bossman though. When things began to go bad. This takes place after my return to Miami from Tucson. I was 17 at the time. My mother and I lived in Fontainebleau Milton Apartments on the second floor, a building which overlooked a huge golf course. Back then, I had an all-black cat that I called Panterita, Little Panther. I loved that goddamn animal. She was always following me. She would sleep in my bed and was always happy to see me home. Everything was nice. At the time, I was dating still and it helped to be so close to someone when my mother began drinking and I couldn't really stay home a whole lot. One day. I came home with my mom after going shopping and found it odd that Panterita wasn't there to greet me. I looked all around the apartment, which wasn't that big to begin with, but found nothing. Even my mother looked and asked the neighbors if they saw anything. She was just gone. I cried all night. A few months later, after my cat disappeared, I was home from my girlfriend's house. It was a Saturday, but no sleepovers were allowed. It was late so I went to bed and as I began to drift into sleep, I felt a pressure at the edge of my bed. I quickly got up to look at it and well, there was nothing. So I figured it was just my imagination and went back to sleep. Later that night though, I was woken up by the same feeling. More importantly, I felt little footsteps on the bed. I nearly jumped up thinking my mother out drinking, found Panterita and brought her home. There was nothing there though. I just sat on the bed, sad, thinking it was just my imagination at work. I looked at the time, it was 3 o'clock in the morning and well, I just laid back down. The thing is, as I tried to sleep, I heard a faint sound. At first, I brushed it off as just the wind but again I heard it and it was unmistakably a meow. I realized there are more cats in the world than just mine, but it felt as if it was her. I jumped out of bed and ran out into the patio overlooking the golf course. It was dark, very dark, which was weird. I knew for a fact that there were lights beyond the golf course and on the street beside my apartment, but there was no light on the course. I didn't much care, I just scanned the field as I was about to turn away and go back to bed. But then, I saw it. Very small, like a tiny little black dot moving across the cut grass. I knew it was her. I was elated, but the sentiment passed almost instantly because I could also see what came behind the black dot. It was a small cluster. I could hear the faint laughter of kids and I just knew they were chasing her. I don't know why, but I felt sickened. Like I knew what those kids wanted to do to her and could almost see it clearly in my mind. I ran to my bedroom, grabbed my shoes and metal bat, then ran out of the apartment. I ran so fast I remember I tripped on the last step down the stairs and went face first into the concrete. I scraped my hands and busted my face up a bit, but I just got up and kept running. I had to go around my building to access the golf course, so it was a ways away. By the time I reached the course, I was already out of breath, but it didn't really matter. I ran into the field and toward where I saw the kids and cat running, but it was weird. Remembering that day, I could recall how cold I was and how the air smelled metallic, like rust. Yet, I can't remember the details of the lights or anything. I just get this image of me running through an ocean of black below my feet toward a silhouette of trees that didn't move. Back then, I wasn't exactly the most level-minded person you'll meet. I had my fair shares of outbursts and violence. I remember the feeling of my face burning like all the blood gathered there from the sheer rage of what I had seen before. I just ran, till my legs felt numb and I finally went into the tree line. Inside, 
I slowly crept and listened, trying to hear anything I could. There was nothing though, no wind, no bugs, no footsteps or anything, just the sound of me. I could hear my own heartbeat, though maybe it was from running so much. Thinking back to it now, it seems like it happened yesterday. My legs twitched just from the thought of it. I know I went inside, but I don't know for how long or just how deep. I just know that in the dark, I never really felt alone. It was like the sensation when you say something wrong at a party and everyone just stops and looks at you. That feeling that you really don't want to be there anymore. That's when I heard it. Faint again. But it was kids laughing. I ran as fast as I could to where I heard the laughter. It's weird. I know the tree line I was in had been packed. But I clearly remember running a straight line. Unobscured. The closer I got to the laughing, the more I could see the cluster. It looked like people wearing black coats. They were huddled around one another, looking down at something. I knew they were kids because little feet in black shoes popped out the back of some of the cloaks, and their voices were very young. As I got close enough to see them, though, I began to get that same sick feeling again. It was like I was about to see something I shouldn't, like my body was screaming for me to turn back. Every time I remember that feeling, I get the sweats. Still do, even now. I remember I yelled, Hey, the fuck are you doing? At the group when I got close enough. It was then that I realized the laughing stopped and they weren't really clustered anymore. They were just looking at me. I don't remember their faces, but it was like I had been submerged in water all of a sudden. I felt heavy and under pressure. But it was what I saw. I swear I could see it. There was this little black body on the ground. And it was in pieces. I knew what it was, but I honestly didn't and still don't want to admit it. I just know I was looking at those kids, but I just knew what was behind them. I just knew what they were doing. It was their faces, though. There was something about their faces. Like I'm not supposed to have seen it. I can't even remember a single detail about it. I just know I saw it and know they smiled with weird teeth. I dropped a bat, turned around and ran. Whatever anger was in me at that point turned into pure terror. I know it seems cowardly, but it's like running into a lion in the middle of the woods. Something you just know you can't take. And I knew there was something wrong there. I ran. So much it felt like my legs were on the verge of snapping in two. I never looked back, but I swear I could hear the laughter and felt them chasing me. It's like that dream where you're being chased and just feel something at your neck about to bite. It got closer, and I remember I just screamed for help and ran as much as I could. I cried and yelled until eventually I had so much sweat and tears in my eyes. I slammed face first into a tree. When I woke up, I was laying against the tree line. The golf course in front of me it was still pitch dark. I remember I felt so drained, like my body had no energy left. There was something there, not on the course, but beyond it. I think it's like looking at a storm approaching. I felt so scared, my heart was practically coming out of my chest. But I swear, for a second, as I wallowed in that terror, I can suddenly feel her on my lap. The terror subsided because it was like I just stopped caring at that point. Whatever was ahead of me, I still saw. I didn't look down, I just ran my hand over her because I knew she was there. I felt its fur and could feel it breathing. And every time I remember, I still feel like crying because I miss her so much. I just knew she was there and I just smiled and closed my eyes. I woke up in my room next and it was daytime. That was, to me, the wildest dream ever. 
Until my girlfriend came into the room, she came to pay me a visit. She yelled and ran towards me. It was when I noticed my sheets were red and brown. I was covered in dirt, cuts, and bruises. I didn't feel much until she touched them, but my legs were beyond sore and it lasted for a full three days. She ran me into the bathroom to clean my cuts and asked me what happened. I told her and she just looked at me like I was a psychopath. I eventually got cleaned up, saw my bed sheets in ruins, and she took me to the patio. The golf course was in front of me, surrounded by a tree line. To my left is where I told her I ran inside. That's when I noticed that the tree line was three trees deep at max. It wasn't nearly enough to go as deep as I had, for as long as I had. I still miss my cat very much. It's nice to talk about her though, and it makes me relive the memories. Sure, it was horrible, but the ones with her are the best thing ever, still. And those few moments I just know were real, and I just know were the greatest thing in the world to me. This story is relevant to everything because whatever that was in the forest never really left me. I still saw it. I still see it, and most of the stories that follow all revolve around it. Thank you for watching ETN. Click here to watch more content. Don't forget to leave a comment. Also, make sure you like and share this video. If you want to know when the next video is up, click the notification bell next to the subscribe button. And most of all, make sure to click that subscribe button for regular content.